New revelations involving Bill O'Reilly and the great number of sexual harassment lawsuits against him that were settled. Fox News paid them out. A fairly strong indication that he in fact did do it. Fox News is not a wilting flower. They don't usually shy away from a fight, especially if they think they're right. And oftentimes they're when they're very, very wrong. They did settle these cases. So let's go to the New York Times to give you some more details. An investigation by the New York Times has found a total of five women who have received payouts from either Mr. O'Reilly or the company in exchange for agreeing to not pursue litigation or speak about their accusations against them. The agreements totaled about $13 million. Now, let me give you a little bit of detail into what was in those lawsuits. The women who made allegations against Mr. O'Reilly either worked for him or appeared on his show. They have complained about a wide range of behavior, including verbal abuse, lewd comments, unwanted advances, and phone calls in which it sounded as if Mr. O'Reilly was masturbating, according to documents and interviews. Now, there is a very famous incident of that. And the tapes were released at one point, we know what O'Reilly said. And yes, I will quote that later in this story. Now, let's go over the number of lawsuits settled at Fox News, first against O'Reilly. Five different ones settled. Now, to be fair to O'Reilly, one of those was not sexual harassment, it was just simply verbal harassment, which doesn't make it much better, but I'm keeping it real. But those are the ones that were settled, there are more allegations. but. They have admitted to five of them, in essence, by settling. Again, Fox News, on a case like Andrea Tantoros, that is not on this list. They did not settle, and they're fighting her vigorously. She has an interesting case to make, but they think she can't prove it. So they're fighting her tooth and nail, even in the midst of this controversy. Now, you think the ones that they settled, they don't know that they absolutely positively did do it? Of course, that's why they paid out $13 million. Now, remember, that's just O'Reilly. Roger Ailes, on that count, they have settled six harassment lawsuits. There are dozens of charges, but they've settled six. So, giving us a grand total of 11, 11 cases of harassment that Fox News has settled on just Bill O'Reilly, their leading host, and Roger Ailes who used to be the head of Fox News. He's of course stepped down since all these allegations came forward and were corroborated. By the way, you know what he got as an exit package? Oh, You sexually harassed all these women, cost the company tens of millions of dollars in lawsuits. He got a $40 million exit package. They didn't take 40 million from him. They gave Ailes $40 million on top as he was leaving. <laughs> Boy. Seems like News Corp is really tough on these sexual harassers. In fact, Bill O'Reilly just got a contract extension, even though they knew about these lawsuits. Now, uh, more details. The reporting suggests a pattern. As an influential figure in the newsroom, Mr. O'Reilly would create a bond with some women by offering advice and promising to help them professionally. He then would pursue sexual relationships with them, causing some to fear that if they rebuffed him, their careers would stall. Now, I'm gonna give you details on that as well because the details are gross and the way he uses power is abusive and disgusting. So, before we get there, another thing that's gross is what his excuses. Now, he doesn't deny that these things happen and he can't, but instead he hides behind his children. Oh. So, here's what he said. But most importantly, I'm a father who cares deeply for my children and who would do anything to avoid hurting them in any way. And so I have to put to rest any controversies to spare my children. That's his way of saying, "Oh no, of course I was innocent, but we paid 13 million dollars in lawsuit settlements anyway because my children, I cared so much about them." In uh, divorce hearings, uh, and I'm only saying this cuz he brought it up, okay? He, one of his kids said that in 11 years, they had almost never seen him. And the word never was emphasized. So those children he cared so much about, he apparently didn't bother to actually parent. Interesting, but again, he goes to his children. It's so sad, man. If you're that kid that never even saw O'Reilly when he was your dad, and now all of a sudden he's hiding behind you as he sexually harasses women left and right. Here's another one. Those of us in the arena are constantly at risk as our families 
as are our families and children. My primary efforts will continue to be to put forth an honest TV program and to protect those close to me. There is no actual denial in those statements. There is just, oh, my kids, they attack my kids. Bill, they didn't attack your kids. It doesn't have anything to do with your kids until you brought them up. So stop hiding behind them. You're such a coward, an unbelievable coward. Okay, now, uh, there is, of course, uh, one that we already knew about in the public record. Now, there's the, the one that was the verbal harassment. There's several others that I'm gonna tell you about that is in the New York Times story. But there's, of course, Andrea Macris, uh, who is someone we found out about a long time ago. And if you watch Countdown with Keith Olbermann or the Young Turks back then, you would have heard all the gory details. I'm gonna give you some of those in a second. But let me remind you what happened there. Ms. Macris also said in the suit that Mr. O'Reilly, who was married at the time, huh, what happened? I thought you cared about your kids. Not enough to apparently try to cheat on them. He and his wife divorced in 2011, threatened her, saying he would make any woman who complained about his behavior, quote, pay so dearly that she'll wish she'd never been born. Now, there is a lot of threats from O'Reilly, which I'm gonna read to you in a sec, about what he's gonna do to these women. Now, if you were falsely accused of something and you were super pissed, and you said, "Oh man, they messed with the wrong guy, okay. But we have the tapes. We know exactly what O'Reilly said and exactly what he did with Macris. So let me read you transcripts from the tapes. Um, and before I do that, actually, one more thing. You know, this is, uh, I'm gonna read you the transcripts in a second. But I wanna go to Megyn Kelly. She wrote a book about this. And she explained to the point that about him saying, oh, they'll be held to pay. She said, at Fox, the entire structure was set up to isolate and silence accusers. So it wasn't just O'Reilly, O'Reilly knew that Roger Ailes, who was also a serial sexual harasser, has his back. Uh, now a new lawsuit says Bill Shine, who's still at the network, also had their back and would cover up, cover up, cover up at all costs. Now there's an investigation of their cover ups uh, being done by prosecutors in New York. Now, actually, let's do this. Let me read you all the threats from O'Reilly. Then I'll read you the transcript of what he actually said. O'Reilly said uh, about this lawsuit from Macris at the time, this is the single most evil thing I have ever experienced and I've seen a lot. So she's evil, not him. He says, but quote, but these people picked the wrong guy. Yeah, they picked a monster to mess with who is has no morality and no sense of decency. And I don't mean his sexual proclivities. I mean what he does to these women to try to destroy them. Let's get into that. New York Times reports, a public relations firm was hired to help shape the narrative in Mr. O'Reilly's favor. And the private investigator, Bo Deedle, who by the way is always on Fox News, that's funny how that works out, was retained to dig up information on Ms. Macris. The goal was to depict her as a promiscuous woman, deeply in debt, who was trying to shake down Mr. O'Reilly, according to people briefed on the strategy. Several unflattering st stories about her appeared in the tabloids. See how sick these guys are? They know she's right, because they have the same uh, transcripts I have. But they go after her anyway, trying to make it seem like, oh, she's a promiscuous one. Oh, she's just in it for the money. And they try to destroy her in the press. And they plant those stories with their friends in the tabloids. Now, because of that, and because of how disgusting they are, I'm gonna actually read you transcripts of Bill O'Reilly trying to have phone sex with Macris. Now, what's amazing about this is the entire time Macris is not participating. It turns out she was recording this stuff after he constantly called her over and over and over again and masturbating on the phone. So this time, again, he's masturbating. Again, Macris isn't even saying anything, this is not reciprocal. And you hear it on the tapes. And here's what O'Reilly's telling her. Oh, you, you definitely get two wines in you. This is what he's saying he would do with her. As quickly as I could, I'd get into you, uh, I would get him into you. Maybe intravenously, get those glasses of wine into you. You would basically be in the shower. And then I would come in and you would have your back to me. And I would take that loofah thing and kind of soap up your back, rub it uh, up all over you, get you to relax, hot water. And um, you know, you'd feel the tension drain out of you and uh, you, you'd still be with your back to me. Man, this is awfully specific. Then I would kind of put my arm, it's one of those mitts, those loofah mitts, you know? So I got my hands in it and I would put it around front, kind of rub your tummy a little bit with it. And then with my other hand, I would start to massage your boobs, get your nipples really hard. 
Cuz I like that, and you have really spectacular boobs. Again, he's saying this to a woman who is not saying anything back. This is not a two-way phone sex. This is just him heavy breathing into the phone telling her all these things as he appears to be masturbating. And then here comes the best part. So anyway, I'd be rubbing your big boobs and getting your nipples really hard, kind of kissing your neck from behind. And then I would take the other hand with the falafel thing. Oh, for Christ's sake. And I just put it in your on your pussy, but you'd have to do it really light, just kind of tease business. Look, the falafel thing, confusing the loofah for the falafel, yes, funny. But if you're in this situation where this pervert keeps calling you and and without you saying you are interested in any way, shape or form, and he's your boss, your boss is calling you to tell you about how he'd rub falafels all over your breasts. And then if you play along, maybe you you know they keep telling you you might get something. If you don't, you're gonna get fired. This is a gross game being played at Fox News for years and years. That was over a decade ago and they kept re-upping his contract. They didn't care at all as long as the money kept rolling in. Okay, so now let's get to the more recent cases. In 2011, Rebecca Gomez Diamond, who had hosted a show on the Fox Business Network, also supervised by Mr. Ailes, was told the network was not renewing her contract. Similar to Ms. Macris, she had recorded conversations with Mr. O'Reilly, according to people familiar with the case. Armed with the recordings, her lawyers went to the company and outlined her complaints against them. So, same exact thing. Even though he got busted, on the Macris case alone, he had to pay $9 million, or Fox News paid the $9 million for it. He goes and does it again with another anchor from Fox Business. And again, he calls her, again, she doesn't participate in the phone sex. Again, this schmuck gets recorded, he hasn't learned a damn thing, it's because they're right wingers, they don't like facts. They're like, you just got sued for the same thing, the same thing. Okay, I'm back with the loofah and the falafel, and again, busted, and again, has to make a payment. Okay, now we go to another person, Huddy, who was another anchor, Juliet Huddy. Among Ms. Huddy's complaints was that he made inappropriate phone calls. There it is again. The lawyer said in correspondence obtained by the Times. The letter said that when he tried to kiss her, she pulled away and fell to the ground, and he didn't help her up. He's such a bad guy, man. I know it's a tiny little detail, but he goes in for the kiss. She stumbles backwards, falls down, and he just looks at her. Uh, now, on the case of Juliet Huddy, when she rebuffed him, he tried to blunt her career prospects, the letter said. So it's not just that he's trying to have sex with them or doing the unwitting phone sex or the not unwitting, but uh, non consensual phone sex, right? It's that he has no indication from them, including in the phone sex, that they're at all interested in him. On top of that, he's basically threatening their careers. Now, it's going to get a little bit more specific. Now, let's stay with Huddy for a second. Before Ms. Huddy reached an agreement with 21st Century Fox, Mr. Newman, Mr. O'Reilly's lawyer, sent a letter to her lawyer outlining some embarrassing personal issues he said Ms. Huddy had. He stated that she would, quote, face significant credibility concerns if she tries to pursue a claim against Mr. O'Reilly. That, to me, this is the worst part. Not only do they do these terrible things, but then they set out to destroy you, even though they know for a fact that you are right. Okay, now we go to Wendy Walsh, this doesn't end. After dinner, they, she gets taken to dinner with, by O'Reilly. He keeps talking to her about how he can help her career. Then after dinner, she said Mr. O'Reilly invited her to his hotel suite. Ms. Walsh says she declined, trying to remain cordial. She suggested that they go to the hotel bar instead. Once there, she said he became hostile, telling her that she could forget any career advice he had given her and that she was on her own. He also told her that her black leather purse was ugly. Classic O'Reilly. He's mean, he's angry, he tries to come on to her, it doesn't work, and then he insults everything about her. Ms. Walsh continued to appear on his show for about four months, but she said she sensed that he had become cold toward her on camera. Then a producer for the O'Reilly Factor told Ms. Walsh that she would no longer appear on the show. She was never made a contributor. You know that contributor role pays hundreds of thousands of dollars. So O'Reilly basically said, if you play ball and you sleep with me, you'll get hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you don't, you'll get nothing, you'll get fired. And he made that clear enough, and it was provable enough 
that they settled and said, you're right, and paid off these women. That's who this scum, Bill O'Reilly, is. So when you watch Fox News, understand who used to run at Roger Ailes and who is their number one star now. This guy who goes at home and harasses his producers, his co-hosts, and, and promises them jobs if they sleep with him. And if they dare not sleep with him, threatens to ruin their reputation, even though he knows they're right. That's Bill O'Reilly, that's Fox News. Membership helps fund the Young Turks. You know one great thing about that? That means we're not accountable to anyone but you guys. That's why we're strong together, because we built this show around you. Come build it even bigger and better at tytnetwork.com slash join.